So I guess the next step is to remove all the rocks, then remove all the substrate, give the tank a clean, and then we can start building a new scape. And yeah, for the past couple of years, I've basically only been doing these like really heavily planted tanks. These are basically the three ingredients that sort of inspired this aquascape. It's gonna be a little bit different from my usual style. Yep, you know what, I'm gonna keep it like that. Keep it simple, don't think too much about it. Okay, people, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Our plan for today is to start taking down the little nano aquascape behind me. Uh, this one has been up and running for almost a year. I think it's been 11 months. Yeah, in the next few days, I want to start something new in here. Uh, this used to be the forest style diorama aquascape. And right now, it's just, a, it's just a tank full of moss. So I kind of figured out that the diorama style is not really for me. It's fun if you are into contest aquascaping and you can really stay on top of trimming and keep the details visible, basically. And this is not really what happened here, so... Yeah, we're gonna make something new. So the water levels drained like 70, 80 percent. This way the, f the fish are just forced to come to the front and it's much easier to catch them instead of just trying to chase them through the entire aquarium. It's a lot less stressful for them. Uh, there's two clear containers for the fish. So one is for the guppies, they will go to the mini patio pond and the scarlet bodies and the, that's the male and there's two more females in there as well and they will probably go into the 70 liter scapers tank. See, that was super quick. So we have these scarlet bodies over there. I have the other guppies over here. So we can start acclimating these guys and continue with the tank. So just quickly move the tank to the dinner table just so I have a little bit more space. Uh, because basically this hardscape is is all glued together. I even glued the sand puff together with the rocks and the hardscape. Everything is just combined with super glue. So I want to see if we can lift it out into segments or like <laughs> in one go. Also, look at this one here. Super cute. So let's just see if we can uh, safely remove the hardscape. Alright, there's all the wood removed. I've also caught the last fish. There was still a few shrimp inside as well. They are now in here. Some pregnant cherry shrimp. Instant hardscape for a little nano cube. So I guess the next step is to remove all the rocks, then remove all the substrate, give the tank a clean, and then we can start building a new scape. Okay, so a few days have passed. Finally found the time to continue with this one. Super excited. It's gonna be a little bit different from my usual style. So I think it's all cleaned up and yeah, ready for something new again. So I have a little helper with this aquascape. But yeah, this is what we're working with. This is a 40 by 30 by 30 centimeter aquarium. So holds roughly 30 to 40 liters, not that much. Then the light is a Jihiro's WRGB Slim. And in the background, we have a light screen from Flux Aqua. So the reason that this aquascape is gonna be a little bit different from my usual layout, basically has to do with these three different products. These are basically the three ingredients that sort of inspired this aquascape. So we have some rocks, we have some gravel, and we have a plant. So let's start with the rocks. These are, yeah, I guess, river pebbles or boulders. I think I've been aquascaping for like seven years now, maybe eight years already. And in all that time, I've actually never really used like river rocks, river pebbles. I've always just used the, you know, dragon stones, cereal stones, lava rocks. What else do we have? Yeah, that's it basically. <laughs> yeah, then this product right here. Actually, let me open it so we can see it properly. Yeah, here we go. So this is a new product from Wio. They call this Biotope Beds. And they sent me a few different ones like a few weeks ago. And I really like this one because it has these like small pebbles, small gravel, and like a really dark sand as well. And I think they will match perfectly with these rocks. These rocks are relatively light. This is quite dark, so it will give us a nice contrast. And if you look at all five of these tanks on the shelf here, and these two tanks over here, they all have aquasol as a substrate. And I'm really missing tanks with a decorative sand. The only tank that has a decorative sand is the Big Shallow, and I'm loving it. It just looks super, super natural, you know? And yeah, for the past couple of years, I've basically only been doing these like really heavily planted tanks that look super good, but not necessarily natural, you know? So I wanna kind of move away from that a little bit and do a few more of these really natural style aquascapes and this is going to be another one. Right, so we talked about the rocks, we talked about the gravel, let's talk about this plant. This is the Nymphoides species Taiwan, and I've actually never used this plant before. 
Well, I used it once, but it was for a client, the 1000 liter cube aquarium. I'll leave a link to the video up there. So I use it there, but not in my own aquascapes. And I just really wanted to try this plant out. I think it looks super cool. Um, I'm really into lilies lately as well. I use the lily in the pond. I use the lily in the uh, shallow tank as well. And this is also sort of a lily, right? So I just couldn't really find the right aquascape for it. But I think in this nanoscape, I think it will work. It is quite a fast growing plant. So we're going to have to stay on top of trimming, but I don't mind trimming. Right, so rocks, gravel and a plant, that's all great. But what about the fish? So I've been thinking to like keep a nice small group of nano fish in here. So my first thought was, of course, these celestial prodanials. I think those are like the most beautiful nano fish ever. Um, I've been keeping them a couple of times over the past few years. So in a way, I'm thinking to try something new, but they're just really beautiful. So I'm not sure if I can find them or if the shop will have them. Another thought they had was these sparkling gourami. They also, I love them as well. And yeah, we just, th those are basically my two favorite options right now. But let's just start building this aquascape. And then once it's cycled, we can go to the shop, see what the shop has available and find something nice for this tank. So I don't feel too comfortable with placing these rocks directly on the glass. I'm going to use a little bit of this styrofoam. I'm going to be using more than just these three rocks actually, but let's just start with the rocks itself. I want to make like a little barrier so we can have the sand in the foreground, aquasol in the background, and then we can plant in that. We're going to have some plant in the, plants in the sand as well, but... Okay, and then for the main rock, I really love the... The indents on here looks very, very cool. So double layer was a bit too thick, so let's just go with one layer. Yep, you know what, I'm going to keep it like that. Keep it simple, don't think too much about it. Because if you start overthinking it, it's going to look unnatural, you know? So I want to fill in aquaso in the back and in order for it to not roll down forward I'm going to plug all these holes here with some filter floss. Okay, I think that's it. I think we're closed on all the gaps even below this big rock over there. So the next step is to fill in the Aquasol. Of course, I'm using Aquario Neosol, still my, still my favorite brand to this day. Been using this for like two years already. Still my favorite Aquasol, contains a ton of nutrients and this requires me to do very, very little liquid fertilizer, which helps me with, with algae issues. So highly recommend this stuff. Okay, so next up is to get our decorative sand slash gravel in. I've just washed it and I have to say it was quite dirty. So that is a bit of a downside to this wheel product, but it's okay, it looks really good. Place some of these bigger ones. Just over there. Also because I'm afraid they're gonna like fall out of my hand and crack the tank. But I really like this mix. So I know I've been saying natural a lot already in this video, but yeah, in my opinion, this looks very natural. I mean, there's a lot of places in the in nature where you will not really find those super bright, white, sandy, yeah, substrates, I guess. This darker substrate is a lot more, yeah, natural again. And also, if we do go for these celestial pearl daniels in this aquascape, they will really pop on that darker substrate as well. So I think it's a good choice. Yeah, so the previous layout in this aquarium had a lot of pieces of wood. And I really wanted to kind of reuse that because it's so covered in moss that it's going to really make this aquascape like instantly look good as well. So I kept the pieces of wood inside the aquarium. I kept the aquarium filled with water just so the wood wouldn't dry out, so the moss, moss wouldn't dry out. So we can definitely reuse some of these pieces again. And there's like, there's java moss on there, there's fissidens on there, there's some ricardia on there as well, some bush of lambda moss. So just a couple of these pieces here and there. I think that looks going to look very good. So I already had a little play around and I think these smaller branches really spoke to me in here. So just, just something like that. Maybe another one going upwards. 
think it looks good. So I just glued this piece of wood over there. Everything else is just loose and scattered. It shouldn't float anymore, so it should be good. I had a few more smaller pieces of wood that I just, you know, I just placed anywhere, just randomly. So yeah, next step, uh, planting. Let's see what kind of plants we have that can go in here. So I have a really, really good plant selection, of course, all from Denola plants. So this is the Crypt Legroy. This is new in the assortment from Denola. A beautiful, beautiful small crypt. Also doesn't grow much bigger than this. This is really nice brown leaves. Love this one. Then we have some Dwarf Sedge. I think this one I'm going to plant in the background together with this one, Helanthium Tendulum Red. So we have a nice grass in the, in the background. And of course, not to forget the Nymphoidus species Taiwan. So that's the background. The crypt will go like in between the rocks, I think. And I also in between the rocks, I want to do a few plugs of the Eleocarus Pusilla. I also have this one, the Hydrocotyl Tripartita Mini. I think we can put like a few here and there just for accent, you know. We have to be really careful with this one because it grows everywhere. And lastly, some nice boost in vitro. This is the mini needle leaf. But I think I'm going to add this one like after a few weeks. Because if I'm going to add it now in the new setup, high chances it's going to melt. Plants are prepared. My little helper is back as well. I'm not sure if he's going to do much, but maybe he's just looking. So let's start planting the background first. So this plant in Nymphoides is of course going to be the focal point. It's going to grow very tall and very big. So we have to really pick the right spot for it. And I'm thinking to place it basically here at the tip of this big rock. The flow is going to come from here as well. So it's going to be pushed in this direction, sort of like slightly overhanging. I think that will be really cool. I have like a lot of this, but I'm only going to be using one because that's just more than enough, you know. Otherwise, it's just going to be too full. Yeah, that's it. That's enough. Now we fill in the rest with the Sagittaria and the Helanthium. So this is the Dwarf Sagittaria that I'm planting right now. And this will grow slightly taller than the Helanthium that I'm planting next. And this one will stay vibrant green. And the Helanthium will turn a slightly reddish color as well. So it's going to be a really nice contrast. Contrast in height, contrast in color. It's going to look amazing. Yeah, so this is the Helanthium. So it's green right now, but give it a few weeks with some intense light. And it'll turn a nice red color. So next up, I want to start planting these crypts and they will go in front. So basically in the sand and not in the aquasol. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to cut the roots a bit shorter so it's easier to plant them. And hopefully they will stay. So one crypt leg row over there, one crypt leg row over there. And then there was a really, really small one that I placed in the back over there. So next, let's go with the hair grass, just a few plugs here and there. And lastly, just a little bit of this tripartita mini. Okay, here we go. Might not really look like much right now, but like in two, three weeks from now, I think it's gonna look really, really good. I do really want to add this boost right now. I think it's creaming boost, but yeah, if I'm gonna do it and it's gonna melt, I'm gonna hate myself. So just be a little bit patient. So let's fill up with water. Let's add a filter, add the CO2, and I'll see you guys in two, three weeks from now when we're gonna buy the fish. Okay, people, fast forward three weeks later, aquarium is fully cycled, ready for fish, and it's looking so good. Really happy with how it's developed in the past three weeks. Plants have grown in nicely. Can't wait to show it to you guys. So I'm now on my way to my local fish shop. See if we can find some celestial pearl daniels or some other nice nano fish. Right, so as always, I'm going to Hames. This is not my most local fish shop, but it's the one with the best options. So this shop is located in Heemstede, which is, yeah, it's about 20 minutes from Amsterdam. So basically the first thing you see when you come in is this beautiful Oase Highline. I think, yeah, Highline 400. This one's always a bit tricky to film because you have a lot of flexions. But nonetheless, this is a very, very beautiful tank. 
And then, yeah, this is the store. On that side, they also have some yeah, cat and dog stuff. But it's mostly just aquarium stuff. And then in the middle here, you have all your aisles with dry goods, filtration, like water treatment, stuff like that. And then on the left side here, you have your first sort of fish section, fish rack. So this is where they keep all the discus fish. And on this side, uh, the somewhat larger fish, dwarf cichlids as well, tetras, quarries, all that kind of stuff. Mostly South American, I guess. So that was that fish section. Then in the middle, they have two very beautiful display tanks. One on top is a bit of a, like a Dutch style tank. And on the bottom is a very nice aquascape with a lot of reds in there as well. Then they have an old other fish section. They have a lot of nano fish in here. They have a lot of shrimp in here as well. Just a really, really huge fish selection. Beautiful shrimp here. They have blues, they have reds, they have crystal blacks, they have yellows, crystal reds, orange ones. So yeah, just a really, really good selection. Some really nice tiger barbs up here as well. Some nice angel fish. Then in this corner, they have all the plants, huge plant selection. Then they have two more display tanks. The one on top is like a Malawi cichlid tank. And this one is just a nice planted aquascape. And lastly, they have like the pond section basically. So lots of goldfish, some more Malawi cichlids here as well. I don't really spend a lot of time in this area. Here they are, still have a few of them. So they're looking a little bit pale, but that's to be expected in these selling tanks, you know. Once we add them to the planted aquarium, they're gonna look much better. So when I was thinking of the stocking options for this tank, I was also looking at the Golden Dwarf Barb. I think MD recently set up a tank for them. I thought they would be a good option as well because they, they seem very, very small. But I noticed that they, just, they have them as well in this, uh, in this shop. And there's a few really big ones in there as well. Like here, there's all the small ones, and then there's a few of these really chunky ones. So they're not as dwarf as I thought, so they are definitely too big for this nanoscape. I'm just kind of looking around for some other nice fish for any future projects. They have some really nice bettas here as well, but they had some bad experiences with bettas. I think I had two or three in the past, and every time they got some issues with fin rot, even though the tank was perfect, you know, like a healthy planted tank, but all the bettas got fin rot, so I'm a little bit hesitant to go for a betta again. Yeah, they do have some really, really beautiful ones here. Okay, we're back home. The fish are still in the bag. I thought let's just first take a close look at the tank because, well, for me, it's been three weeks. For you guys, it's only been a few minutes. But I'm really happy with how it's developed in the past three weeks. The plants have grown nicely. Really happy with how that uh, nymphia is looking. After about 10 days or so, I've added the, uh, the small boost as well, including one more plant, but you can't really see it right now. It's in the background, it's the uh, Eleocaris montividensis. It's a very tall grass plant, but it was in vitro, so it still needs to grow a bit taller. Yeah, I think it looks very cool. Um, in terms of equipment, I've added a small uh, filter. This is the Dellen Escaper Slow. It's like a, a mix between a canister filter and a hang on the back filter. Um, I've also added CO2, and for the CO2 I'm using, this is a new product from Tropica, the CO2 System Bio. It's basically very similar to uh, my own DIY CO2 system, so when you buy this bottle, you, there's like a mix of sugar and gelatin in there. You add some water, you shake it, you leave it for 24 hours, then you add yeast to it, and then within a few hours you have CO2. Uh, but I did notice that it's um, producing quite a lot of CO2 right now, because it's, it's quite warm in the house. So it's, it's working very hard. So I think for the fish, that's not really pleasant. So I'm thinking I'm gonna remove the CO2 for now, uh, do a big water change as well, because otherwise these fish are not gonna be happy. Here we go, quick water change done. Next, I'm actually gonna turn the lights off, then float the bag with fish in here for like half an hour or so, and then we can come back and release them. So it's now been like 15 minutes or so, so at this point I just like to open the bag up 
and then I'll just attach it to the side of the glass with a small clipper and then like every few minutes or so I'll just add a little bit of water just so the fish can also get adjusted to the other water parameters you know not just the temperature but also the pH KH and maybe there's still some CO2 in here so they can get adjusted to that as well okay another 15 20 minutes have passed so we should be all good to release these guys they're actually looking a bit more colorful already than when we first saw them in the store I think the one on the left there is gonna be a beautiful male so we have six of them and I also just caught six um, blue shrimp the blue velvet shrimp including two nearby snails and a bunch of duckweed the shrimp and the snails came from this aquarium I already mentioned in a previous video that I'm not really happy with how this aquarium is doing so I'm gonna take it down and make something new out of it and also the shrimp in here were not breeding so might as well just add them with the uh, celestial pearl daniels right here we go enjoy your freedom guys hope you like the thing that I made for you Instantly hiding underneath that uh, nymphaea. It's kind of what I thought they were gonna do. Ah, that's so cool though. They'll probably be shy for a little bit, so let's give them some. Uh, let's give them some time to adjust. Let's add the shrimp and the nearby snails in as well. I think the blue shrimp will uh, will match this layout nicely as well. What are you doing over there? You don't want to join your new uh, your friends? Okay. I think that's the stocking for this tank complete. Doesn't need more than that. Six CPDs and some blue velvet shrimp. Yeah, I think these celestial potentials were the perfect fit for this aquarium. I think they just really fit with this cape, you know, like that natural sort of river style. Yeah, really happy with that. I'm just completely spoiling these guys. Yesterday they had Daphnia, today they're getting brine shrimp. Forcing them to, forcing them to love me. So I was still missing a little touch of red in this cape, so yesterday I added a few of the really red, red root floaters. So I think now it's really finished. I'm really happy with it. Happy with the fish, happy with the shrimp. Happy with how this cape turned out. I hope you guys liked it as well. If you did like it, don't forget to smash that like button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.